Welcome to Morningstar. I'm Holly Black. With me is Yanis Fontikis. He's an equity analyst at Morningstar. Hello. Hello, Holly. Thanks for having me. So one uh, sector that I think is foremost on many people's minds in all of this is the supermarkets. Uh, there are queues outside them. People have been accused of panic buying. Uh, but from your perspective as an analyst, how do you think the grocers are responding to the coronavirus outbreak? Yes, that's, that's exactly right. As you just mentioned, Holly, um, this is a panic. And this has led to panic buying. So um, grocers try to make sure that there will be enough stock, food supplies, and basic necessities uh, for everybody, which has forced grocers to introduce a rationing on um, virtually all grocery products so that more customers can buy them. So other actions uh, that uh, grocers are, are undertaking during those uh, very um, challenging times is um, hiring tens of thousands of new employees uh, to work in the uh, warehouses and, uh, and delivery operations so that they can cope with a significant spike in demand, both in stores uh, and online. And finally, I think the majority of large uh, supermarkets have pledged uh, to reduce the time it takes to pay uh, suppliers, especially the smaller ones, and uh, ensure smooth and, uh, and timely movement of food supplies uh, through the system. So a lot of this seems like quite a positive backdrop for the industry. What do you think the short-term implications are for these companies? Yes, so the main impact has been on top-line growth. Um, this has been unprecedented with grocers uh, that have reported numbers so far uh, commenting on uh, plus 10% top-line growth. Um, in some cases, such as uh, Ocado Retail uh, more recently, more than 20% growth. So some of this is um, obviously the result of, uh, uh, you know, people working from home, essentially cutting uh, all unnecessary um, uh, social interactions. Uh, for instance, food out of home consumption is around 50 billion pounds in the UK, or around uh, 4 billion per month, uh, with a good portion of that currently being spent in uh, food at home channels. So supermarkets are expected to gain share as long as this crisis continues, but this should gradually uh, normalize uh, as life returns to, to, to normal, so in the quarters and, and probably months ahead. So despite this unprecedented demand spike um, due to, um, to COVID-19, um, we expect forward buying to sort of uh, unwind at some point and uh, capacity constraints, in particular this delivery capacity, uh, to limit sales growth in the next uh, few quarters, hopefully. So it sounds like there will be sort of an initial spike where uh, there's this unprecedented growth and then that will ease off. What are the long-term implications for the sector? Yeah, so, I mean, in the past, we've, uh, we've talked about uh, the two structural threats that uh, the sector has been facing over the uh, last several years now. Uh, namely uh, the increased penetration of online grocery, as well as the uh, disruption by discounters. Now, from a uh, COVID-19 perspective, online adoption rates uh, should accelerate, uh, benefiting uh, grocers with uh, already developed and mature uh, online and online channel offerings so, and technology providers that help grocers transition uh, smoothly online. Now, from a uh, brand perspective, Supermarket brands um, have a chance to sign again, but uh, we don't foresee a lot of uh, upside for grocers in terms of brand loyalty. Um, rather, I would say that um, there is a higher risk of brand damage in cases where uh, grocers do not adhere to their uh, typical service standards. And this is especially uh, important nowadays uh, for the online channel. So aspects of that channel of the service, such as um, availability, uh, timely deliveries, or even capacity to serve are crucial. So now from a uh, more long-term valuation perspective, um, the materiality of this in terms of valuation is still uh, uncertain uh, because that depends on the uh, duration and intensity of this uh, crisis, both of which are still big unknowns right now. Okay, so um, within that, are there any stocks you particularly like? Are there any investment opportunities in this space at the moment? Yeah, so so there are a couple of them. 
from the traditional grocery space, um, we see Tesco and Sainsbury's as better positioned to weather uh, this crisis and transition to online. Uh, from the pure e-commerce space uh, in Europe, um, we do like Ocado. We think that um, a long-term investment in Ocado exhibits uh, defensive characteristics. Uh, it, as it combines exposure in both the online and grocery and markets, especially so um, in today's um, uh, uncertain environment where the uh, impact of this pandemic, uh, uh, long-lasting or not, uh, could result in even faster online grocery penetration in the years ahead. Yanis, thank you so much for your time. For Morningstar, I'm Holly Black.